the objective to be fighter ambush. Um, right now, I do I cannot confirm who is first player, uh, but I strongly believe it's Christian. Yes, it is Christian because uh, Montana started placing uh, the asteroids first. Rounding out uh, Christian's uh, squads are his uh, Mornaki, Mahler Mythil, and then his uh, Jonas, which enables the quad bot battery turrets, and uh, a Sienna Reed to pin stuff, and Colonel Jendon and Merrick Stahl. Yeah. So you texted me probably on a Monday or Tuesday trying to figure out what to field, and we had this huge roundabout discussion where he still ended up bring the same list he always brings but what came out of it is he was not happy with the gladiator 2 with callus uh that he was flying for a while that that uh demolisher for anti-squadrons he thought squadrons are not going to be as prevalent and he's always wishing that it did more damage so this is him trying that heavier damage stuff and it's not as maneuverable it's missing that key engine tech piece yes yes um but based on how christian place it fits his style it's it's very it's a very christian build we are playing um fighter ambush christian will be able to out deploy the Imper the uh fleet from montana just because the squadrons are set aside so uh a christian correcting uh montana that yeah. he is indeed first player but right. uh, montana is saying that he's very excited this is the first time montana's on stream yeah uh, Christian's a regular around here, and uh, we featured him on quite a few streams. Uh, and Montana's a, a newer face to our Ontario Armada community, and he comes from Ottawa. Christian dropping down his Architons at speed two. With all the squadrons being dropped after the fact, it, you, I just feel it would be safer for uh, Montana just to drop his squadrons right next to maybe the station and stuff or in his normal ships, the Gazanti being dropped at speed one, and not really going to try and do an all-in crazy play of setting his fighters next to uh, the enemy ships, which he has a chance to do. But that would be absurd. That would be absurd. I, I don't think he, he should. Yeah. I think uh, that he should uh, use the opportunity to uh, make himself at home in the different uh, rocks and asteroids and stations throughout his uh, deployment area close to his deployment area it's uh certainly a very turtling type of uh board where there's no easy access for for ships it's going to be a squadron focused game for the initial half and then uh, we'll see how the capital ships shake out and with uh initiative it, it's i i heavily favor uh christians christians uh, squadrons in the squad battle uh, there's low HP squadrons. Yes, they have scatter, but it's... you can you can overwhelm them, and uh, they don't have any escort in the in the mix. So, whoever wins the squadron war will have a good advantage based on fighter amb ambush to win the game. Yeah. Scoring extra points, getting that damage in. Montana's list does have the benefit of having the Imperial too. Uh, with two blue dice for anti squadron, just that, just that little extra oomph going in. The Arkeaton light cruiser, I believe, is the uh, uh, the cheaper version. It is the black die version. Yeah. So that's a little less dice being thrown in there. And same with the gladiator. The gladiator still, they both have one dice. Now I get, I guess the Gazanti still only has a black dice. So. The Imperial does have the benefit of leading shots and two blue dice to help. Overwhelm damage. Montana's trying to uh, goad uh, Christian into deploying a few ships. Christian's having none of it. As you mentioned, uh, Montana's at a bit of a deployment disadvantage right now, so he must commit all of his ships down on the board while Christian is slowly placing his six squads. Um, Victory gets dropped. Yep, Montana has deployed everything at speed one. And Christian has deployed everything at speed two. So Christian will be charging in while Montana's going to be biding his time. Kind of hard to figure out where it looks like this. I would guess the squadron fight would take place in the open area here. I, I'm sure Montana would like to fight 
closer to the station, but I don't know if Christians is going to give that kind of fight. Now, this is a time where I wish I would have had Saber Squadron if I was <laughs> one of these players. Absolutely. They could slowly poke, poke people down. Poke people out of a, a good defensive position. Saber is very good for that. Yep. One of my favorite squadrons to use. Snipe is a nice keyword. I wish Imperials had more, but that wouldn't be fair. I, I hope Montana remembers and respects uh, Centicore on the Architects because that may come to be a nasty surprise in the event that uh, Christian's Gladiator reveals a squadron command and all of a sudden pushes squadrons from from the <laughs> other side of the board while it flanks for a, a double arc or some other nasty combination. In a situation like this, squadron placement and squadron discipline is very important for the first two to three rounds and then everything happens very quickly. And with the low hit point squadrons, they die very quickly too. So Montana has to really leverage those uh, rocks in his deployment zone, but not in such a way that he runs over them and takes unnecessary damage. You'll have to also respect uh, Christian's uh, flank of the uh, gla gladiator and uh, victory because those two are a awful lot of hurt. One other thing too uh, that may not Montana may not be ready for is the uh, Warlord quad uh, quad turbo laser cannons. There's too many quads. So like it's, it's at least uh, three upgrades that are quads of sorts. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, but just getting back, uh, not respecting the quads with his Gazanti and floating it into Jonas range, and then all of a sudden it exploding because you can't use tokens. Christian doesn't have many scatter aces, where Sloan is really, really good at forcing out, or, or exploiting the low HP. His squadrons are high enough HP. Um, so Sloan, eh, I don't really think will have an amazing impact in the squadron game. It's still scary, but not amazing. And Christian pushing forward his uh, Demolisher. Yeah, his, uh, engine the, Techless Demolisher at speed 2, he banked a Nav token. The engine techs might be the one surprise, not necessarily surprise factor, but the thing Montana will be able to leverage a little more, be getting that extra jump on the demolisher. Granted, yes. he is going second. And he does have activate him. There is a strategic advisor, so yep. he does have activate. Strategic advantage. advisor was used so that uh, Christian had to move his victory, and Christian carefully moving his stuff straight. No turning necessary. Just drive forward. Nav revealed on the um, Demolisher. Token taken. Slowly rolling at one. From our angle, it looks like he's overlapping that uh, asteroid, but it is not the case. Yep. Our Keaton's revealed the Nav, taking a token. And again, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Nav is really important for our Keaton's. Their turning at higher speeds isn't that great. So it's kind of like a, a faster victory. It still turns like a barge. <laughs> and he's turning away. This is a very non-Christian move. Oh, hasn't committed to it yet. Ah, there we go. That's the Christian move. I was expecting that. <laughs> and and uh, he splits it with it. What, I, I, guess, I guess he didn't want to really adjust from his plan of moving forward the entire game. Um, so we'll see if he turns in the following round. The Gazanti has moved forward. A lot of uh, caution exercise on Montana, rightly so. Taking um, squadron token. Taking squadron token, passing it to his ISD, which has a navigate token on it. And uh, is he going to drift forward? Is this going to be a turn of going straight? It might be too soon to turn in. And I think he needs a nav bucket to, to really... Uh, dodge that uh, port side rock, and his Gazanti is kind of chopping him off from any sort of decent angle. I feel he's going to need to, the next couple turns or two, jump up the speed of the ISD or it won't become a factor in the fight. Absolutely. I always find that uh, it's tough to make sure everything is engaging at the same turn. Mm -hmm. Like you'll fly one ship in, it'll be at long range, yep. but then you'll fly your next ship in and it won't be able to engage. And then yep. the sh one ship you push forward just takes the brunt of fire and 
it's a little too little too late yeah. to uh, really maximize your uh, firepower. Checking range from long range. Just, just out. So it looks like he bumped up to speed two on his ISD, and I, I like that play. I like getting up there, and his squadrons move fast. Everything's got to keep up. Uh, yeah. Now the squadron pushing. Uh, Christian checking for short range. Uh, medium short range on uh, his VSD. Um, likely that is his carrier, together with the, the gladiator, actually, to keep his uh, squadrons pushed. One thing we were uh, talking about earlier, Jordan and I, was uh, how the gladiator can do squadron commands and still has a squadron value of two. Uh, pushed up to three, which is equivalent to a victory if with a token. Now, now is the uh, the careful balance of uh, measuring and planning out what to do with the squadrons. The engagement is very, very crucial, and it's always a game of millimeters. So, what do you offer? What what's in position? What can you counterattack with? And it, it, the squadron game is very nuanced, and uh, Christian is rightly worried about uh, a few squadron commands coming from Montana to potentially remove the brace or something else on that uh, victory. Christian's swearing like a pirate. Um, there's absolutely no good move for him, so he opts to not do any moves. A uh, bit more shuffling coming from Montana, just reorganizing his squads. Both players want to kind of hover around their carrier. So it's it's... They're close enough to engage, but there's no opportunity to begin the jump. But they don't want to be caught. Christian, uh, moving his Arketons up here at speed. Sp jumping up to speed three. Uh, looking to stay out of the front arc of the ISD. Uh, there is a asteroid field right there. Double arc in red range. Uh, so double arc at red range, long range, and since uh, there is Nita, uh, the Arkeaton has two evades. I believe a strat advisor was just used. So Christian is going to be trying to figure out. Victory will be moving. Squadron command uh, looks like from the victory. He's spending it. Interesting. I think he's going to try and make a move. Oh, this is risky. Do you now, think he's attempting to try to uh, wipe out all his, uh, as many of uh, Montana's squadrons before Montana retaliates? Or maybe do you think that <clears throat> Montana, he's thinking maybe Montana didn't dial in a squadron command for turn two? I, I think he's just taking a risk here. That could be the thing. He could have just dialed the squadron in. Because usually, uh, when, it, when it comes to, uh, you know, Imperial squadrons versus Imperial squadrons, you kind of want to strike first and yes. eliminate as much of the opponent's... Uh, Four damage, scatter. Goodbye, scatter. I believe he's shooting at Howl Runner. That would be a great piece to take off the table. Checking for Centicore here. Yeah. I guess he, Merrick's being used as bait. Oh, this is smart. That's smart. Making sure Jendon is in range of relay. Oh, got the accuracy. Yeah, I'm locking bracing. down the accuracy. Forced to brace yeah. here. There's a three damage being braced to two. How runner is in trouble, but with the jump master, she can always just go hop back onto the station. Yeah, but this is where Mahler Mithil comes in, right? Or no, he's going to go for Sienna. Sienna first. That is true. I mean, Mahler's always an option to finish off Hal Runner if he really wants to. I don't know if Hal Runner has the... Uh, or sorry, Mahler has the range. I know. Maybe. Again, it's very difficult to judge range. I guess it's just going to be Sienna. Four blue dice. Will it happen? I see an accuracy. Swarm reroll. There we go. Yeah, accuracy for the scatter. Yep. And then one I damage is all they need. Looked like she had rolled three, or he had rolled three critical hits, meaning squadrons don't hit anything. So 
But with a swarm reroll, that got him. 16 points for Christian. The question is, is Merrick going to go down because of this? And we'll see if there's retaliatory squadron commands. And victory slowly lumbering forward. He, he is going to activate a squadron. He's using a squadron command uh, with the token. So five squadrons in total. And just because you get the jump with squadrons doesn't mean that you have the advantage. Sometimes your your opponent may be anticipating the counterattack, and it's it's much harder than your initial hit. So it, it really needs to be carefully planned and executed. Montana is a very careful and methodical player as well, and uh, he he sees the the bigger picture of how to develop the squadrons. It's a He's putting that big picture together in his head right now in order to to go in. Merrick, Jendon, and Merrick. Merrick and Jendon from both sides are now tied up. So his... I was just going for Jendon. His... Uh, ooh. Ooh. I'm Merrick. His Merrick has engaged his um, uh, Christian's Jendon. Ooh, I'm kind of questionable about that that's, that's a that's a big play uh, he's he's in range that of morna three damage the scary thing is morna is right next to him and morna is going to pound merrick into dust that's okay i i think i i think i know what montana is doing and i i think that's a <laughs> that's a bold play that's such a bold play I was going to use Sienna to tie up Morna as well. Mahler drops in. Mahler drops in, splashes all three. This is a tense, tense moment. Mahler, whenever he's engaged with a squadron at range one, they take one damage. Yep. Free damage. There's he's rerolling the swarm. So a Wait. slow and accuracy is I'm going to be used on... What's he shooting at? He's shooting at Jendon. Yeah, so Oh, I can see I see what he did. I So he burned is, he burned the That's smaller. Yeah, that's I smaller. Wasn't sure exactly where he went. So he's he's pinning Jendon. I see. With those two. And it's it's a very very risky and bold way of doing it. He needs to finish Jendon. Otherwise this gambit falls apart. Um, he should be able to activate his own Jendon uh, if he has, if he still has activations to push. Yes, he has three activations remaining. Uh, how much health is Jendon at? Is he down to two? Jendon would have two from uh, Merrick, one from Mahler Splash, one more from Mahler. So that puts Jendon at two. Yes. So another good hit from anything. This looks like Valen. He's going for the Speed 4 Maneuver Tool, and Valen is going to be launched kind of into the back lines of Christian's list. He's doing it. Or is he not doing it? Valen is, while an enemy squadron is engaged with another squadron, it cannot attack you. That does not stop uh, ships from flacking. Christian's list does not have intel. So by pinning different elements of it, he's forcing a squadron engagement. Montana is positioning his Valen so that he's just out of range of Christian Siena, but in range of Jendon. So they're using the washer as a proxy. It's in range. He's going in. Three dice. Swarm reroll. Good enough. If he was attacking Jendon. So Jendon should be dead. How is he not dead? Jendon? So he took two from... He took two from uh, Merrick. One from Mahler. One from... Yeah, there should be a dead Jendon, shouldn't there? 
Uh, we're checking. Maybe the. Uh, Hold on, uh, we're having a. Maybe our Riken snuck in here. Is there a Riken aboard that Admiral Modi ship? ship? Victor has gone to check out the table for us. One health remaining on uh, Jendon. Good enough. Now he goes down. Sienna, and that's... He's, o he's extended far. Um, it depends where he positions his own, where uh, Montana positions Jendon. He's activated four squadrons. He has one more. Who's it going to be? So I think they I think they did check for grit range. Yeah. So uh Montana weighing his options. Uh just looking at the top was uh Christian's Mahler pinned. Christian's Mahler, Mahler would be one of these two. Jonas is on the rock and Mahler no, is behind I, him. I don't think he he pinned, so Okay. Merrick uh, shots on Merrick? Yes. So he's uh, used Swarm. Jendon to activate Mauler again. Now Jendon is exposed. Jendon has exposed himself, uh, but he's gone to lock down the grit of uh, Merrick. And not to mention Merrick and uh, Sienna has also already activated this turn, so they'll be safe until the next one. Mm-hmm. Players talking about the washer setup on how to use squadrons, which this is a cool thing if you like playing in squadrons. Uh, I forget the exact size of them, but if you can fit washers underneath, one eighth of an one inch. One and one eighth. One and one eighth. It's a very, very weird size. Not all Home it's Depots. Impo almost impossible to find. <laughs> yeah. Not all Home, home we Depots or Canadian Tires uh, have it. It's impossible to find. And uh, Now, uh, one, one cool trick that... Uh, one of the Justins from uh, Texas showed me was he took a bunch of uh, squadron bases, turned them upside down, and then poured uh, silicone. So it perfectly molded into the uh, the squadron base. And when you flip it over, it's got the, the silicone grip. So that's an alternative to the washers. And uh, I've been using his uh, little grippy, grippy things for the last two years at least. I swear by them now. So long range shot going at the arc. Looks like three damage. That's some nice damage. Evading a crit. And then there's going to be a redirect. So two damage. Uh, push somewhere on that Architens. Two damage. Put sent to the front, it appears. And, then and redirect it to the side. Next up is going to be a side arc. It It is not in range. Uh, may, might not be. Obstructed. Not obstructed. Not obstructed. Okay. So two, maybe two reds to the front. Three dice long range obstructed into the front of the victory. Gunnery team coming into play. Ooh. And uh, that's a beautiful unmodified three red dice shot. It's the Yavaris special coming into play again. <laughs> uh, Whenever rolling three dice, uh, it's always terrible. Now moving at speed two. Uh, it's, can he avoid... Ooh. That that un undoes his uh, careful positioning if he runs over the squads, but it may be necessary. It puts him in a nice position to get some damage on the victory if he wishes to go that route. I do like taking out Jendon in this situation because uh, the Christian's Jendon because uh, now now Centicore is a little less uh, dangerous. Because Jenden was in a position to just relay everything else. Yes. Relay two through Senecor and then another two through Jenden. Now that Jenden's gone. No, you've got a total of two squads that you can activate, but um, you can push them both through relay. So yes. that's that's still a tremendous range. Oh, I, I was assuming you activated four with the VSD and pushed two through Senecor, and then you could do the remaining two through Jenden as well. Yep. But Merrick gets oh. run over. He overlaps Merrick, not his own Jendon. Interesting. Uh, did he overlap that asteroid? Seeing as it's not there anymore, I'm guessing so. He dodged that rock. That was a good play. Yep. <laughs> Under the model is an <laughs> asteroid. And it's not touching the base or wow. the shield dial. What? Nice. A player. Nice play. Yep, that was looks like a squadron command from uh, 
with the demo just taking it as token, not. I guess he's out of range of Centacore. I think I think he checked range and he there's again because taking out the Jenden, that that was a nice play on Montana's side. Let's cover up that Centacore of shame uh, with the uh, lists. We see uh, Christian's demolisher being used as a as a pinch carrier. For how much longer? Not sure. He's gonna have to reposition the squadrons near yeah. Centacore. Yeah. Spending a token, increasing to speed three. Yeah. So uh, trapping, trapping uh, the opponent's demolisher. It looks like he's getting yeah. pinched. A obstructed front rain, front uh, arc demolisher shot at the side of Montana's demolisher. We'll see what happens. And it's an accuracy. Beautiful. Red dice of the best. Nice warning shot across a bow. Not not the, the other demo's bow, but someone's bow. <laughs> a lot more uh, maneuvering and posturing. This is this is tough because if he goes too fast, he, he gets a uh, range one blast from the victory. There might be an angle to to escape, but he's still going to take. He still may take a uh, range one uh, shot from the. VSD next round. So Montana's Montana's in a poor position to uh, in a poor position with his demolisher. Engineering from the demolisher. Interesting. He's using he's doing his front shot now. Huh? Oh, nice. Two damage. Two damage. It, there's going to be a redirect spent, and damage is going to the port side. Nav has uh, been uh, declared as uh, and the intent, uh, oh. but he doesn't have to. Montana does not have to spend it until he puts in his maneuver. There's a there's a very very small opening that may be able to fit inside, but regardless, if he's at close range, he's still going to get a, a blast to the face with the. Ordnance yeah. experts, external racks. racks. Oh. It's, it's punishing. Um, is he? He might be. I guess be in range of uh, Brunson. It is in close range. So All demolisher, right. doing its thing. I think there's a crit. Yes. Montana's a gambling man and rerolls his single hits. There's a brace declared. Five, Five damage, damage right now. Brace to three. APT has not been declared, but most likely will be. So APT drills past shields to deliver crits. Brace, Brace redirect. redirect. Capacitor failure. Very nice. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, if there are no re if there are no remaining field shields in a hull zone, you can't transfer to that. If a hull zone has no remaining shields, uh, you cannot uh, redirect from it and can't redirect from that zone to an adjacent zone. Scary. VSD is relatively light shielding, three all around and one in the rear. Or is it 3-2-2? Three, two, two? I think it's 3-3-1. 3-3-1. 3-3-1. Three, 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 one. One. Three, three, one, so. three, three, one. I'm, I'm personally sweating in this chair because I've been in this situation my fair share of times and, and every time... My demo does not look <laughs> does not look happy. Oh, this is. Oh, there's good. Please, no, Jonas. Jonas, no. Yeah. So Christian has a double arc on the ISD, but not on the on the demo. Oh. Gazanti, moving up. Very slowly, speed one as always, passing off its. Uh, Tokens like a good team player that it is. Squadron phase has begun. Ah, there he goes. There goes Jonas. Jonas was not pinned down. Jonas was happy in a rock. Jonas is flying on up. The only unactivated squadron from uh, Montana's side is uh, the poor little jump master in the back. So um, when the victory goes off with Jonas. In position, 
he's going to get two accuracies off the bat. bat. Yes. So Jonas, range one of Demolisher. Mauler uh, Mithil, moving up. Christian, Christian weighing heavily on, on which squadrons to, to bring up. Because he's, he's telegraphing to me that there's, there's very likely a squadron um, dial on that victory. Yep. But uh, out of the 50 predictions we've made today, I think only four have been correct. Christian is weighing the different um, splash zones that uh, Mahler can uh, enter. Um, Montana's got very good positioning with his fleet, where he managed to pick off Jendon, but not uh, cluster his forces. So the Mahler Mythal likely uh, may do three damage back to Montana's ships, depending on where uh, Christian goes. So... The, the Mauler splash from Christian is, is more impactful because Montana's ships are lower HP. Yes. So he's going to try to not engage that squadron right there. So that's uh, Montana's Mauler Mythal. Just decides to uh, not try and splash. So, uh, or not. <laughs> decides Christian, just, Christian uh, being indecisive. Everyone, everyone getting a little bit of Mahler love. Yep. Valen takes one. Mahler takes one. Victory being declared as the first activation from Christian. With Squadron these. command. Merrick being activated. No way. Oh, it, grit. Is, is it worth grit? Uh, just throwing everything at uh, Demolisher? We're throwing everything at Demolisher? Absolutely. At this point, Demolisher just is burning every single defense token it's got. Like, there's... If it lives through this, it's okay. But this is, this is, this is all in. Yeah. Christian's taken all his chips. Push them forward. Double, double crit. Double crit. Brace redirect. Redirect to front. Interesting. Interesting choice. Oh, I guess you can send it to the rear, but that seems inconsequential. Jonas, Jonas bombing the front. Oh Hit crit. no! Hit uh, crit. Broken world's dice. Broken, broken world's, world's dice. dice. Brunson being used on the double. So, a warlord, while attacking, you may change a die with an accuracy face to a side with a hit face. So. If you've got a red die with an accuracy, well, guess what? That's a double hit. Yep, seems good. It's pretty good with Callus as well. Agent Callus. Agent Callus, yep. <laughs> Sienna Reed. Sienna is Sienna. shooting Mahler. Sienna on Mahler. Uh, getting Swarm? Yep. Swarm reroll. Two damage. Two damage. The uh, getting scattered off? No. Okay. Okay. Christian, stop teasing us. I can't take this any longer. Shoot the demo. Shooting, Shooting the front. Yeah. Ah, so I didn't like that redirect to the front. Oof. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. there's the whiff. Here comes the whiff. Ooh. Doesn't matter because of, of all the... Jonas. Oh, never mind. Ordnance experts coming in. Five damage showing. Captain Jones turns it into an accuracy. Quad Turbo adds another accuracy. Done. That's that's my thought exactly. Yep. That that scream of pain from from a distant <laughs> table and X-wing. Uh, poor a thousand one. demolishers. Poor one out Cried for out in agony. Now. And now silence. As a terror for how many years demolisher, some people might find that a little. Uh, short, no, not short and fraud. Can we get a, an F in chat for uh, demolisher? <laughs> yep. Jonas. 
is Jonas. Making, uh, oh yes, Jonas is a Jonas drink. making some magic out of nothing. And Jonas turning nothing into something. No brace. No brace. Yeah. Redirect. The combo is coming on screen. Yep. Jonas Warlord QBT. 32 point combo. Two damage value and deleting a demolisher. Seems but good. 82 man. point value. 88 point value on that uh, <laughs> gladiator. Oh, uh, yeah. Pushing, pushing that damage to the, to the front was not the, the right choice. Should have gone to the rear um, because then it would have been a side shot and it would have forced the ram. Yes. The trading, uh, he's going to trade his victory probably for the ISD. But that victory is lining up for that station. It's it's just going to park itself there with Modi huh. and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a hog. This is a refreshing change for some, a, a moment of agony for others. Demo is the only reason that I'm able to succeed in Armada. Because Rhymer's demo. nerfed. Uh, Rhymer was my other crutch, and they took it away <laughs> from me. Now, without Demo. Uh, just, we'll just rely on Superstar Destroyers. Exactly. Uh, we've got some squadron commands coming out of, uh, coming out of the ISD. Uh, they're Players, just doing some uh, noticing something's wrong. Yeah, a little bit of housekeeping. Maybe some activation sliders being not activated properly. Going to see if Merrick can go and uh, sneak over there and fire at that um, uh, victory. I'm not sure what the shield situation is for the victory. It's taken a, a little bit of damage, uh, but I think it's all, all on the port side. So I think that side, I think that side is um, untouched. Uh, there's a bit of discussion on uh, whether or not there's an engagement with uh, Christian Smaller or not. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if they are debating whether or not to be engaged with that. Montana's clarifying his intentions. You can't. Yeah, he's, wor he's worried here. But uh, they're misinterpreting grit. These guys right there. Montana may be making a mistake here with the interpretation of grit. Victor is coming to assist with the interpretation of it. Okay, don't worry. The intel here is can't making Merrick heavy. So misinterpreting grit, but saving because he's got an intel giving Merrick heavy. He's getting his so, shots in. A bit of clarification. So I'm hoping, uh, he's probably hoping uh, he's going to shoot into a side that will um, not be, be affected. Sorry, uh, we re remove all the shield and then be affected by that capacitor crit. Leaving it oh. wide open to take a full grunt from the ISD. That is nice. That would be nice. That would be nice. Only an accuracy would knock out the brace, and he's just yep. taking full damage in there. So. Yep. Jenden, second shot. Jenden magic. Christian taking the damage. He's. He received a damage munitions crit. No shields on that side and there's a capacitor failure so there's going to be a lot of part coming in from that uh, ISD. A bit of um, clarification between Montana and Christian with regards to squadron positioning. Oh I forgot there's ECMs. Yep. Oh, the, the One damage the from the jump master. So the victory now has uh, four damage cards on it. Mauler Hop is going to go right here and more Splash Carnage. Is he going to go for the side? I, he, is, out of, he is bombing. Out of curiosity, I wonder if uh, Montana has been collecting uh, victory tokens for the fighter ambush. He's dealt a significant Are damage. they keeping track of their uh, fighter tokens, their fighter ambush tokens? Is it is it an optional or is it a framework element? That I'm not sure about. Uh, after a squadron performs an attack, the defender was dealt damage. The squadron gains one thing or one victory. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not an optional. It's not an optional game framework. Um, 
this, this matters in the case of an accounting error, um, but in other objectives, in other objectives where you may uh, pick up a token, the may keyword, if you don't claim it in the right timing window, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, cases are such as an Intel sweep uh, objective token or a VIP token. Right. So an additional two victory tokens for Montana. So I'm pretty sure this uh, victory is gonna, might survive. He needs 12 damage just due to the uh, brace always being able to trigger with DCMs. But his brace is going to get overwhelmed or slowed. So Mahler did not have an angle, turns out. Um, there's going to be a swarm. He's shooting Merrick. Not one. Nothing. And accuracy is being spent to cause Christian's Merrick to spend a brace. Christian's calling out Montana on uh, <laughs> not activating his, his squadrons in the right order. Something's wrong with the colors. They're sorting it out now. Players are building consensus, and I think they're right. Squadrons are messy when it comes to a, a tense moment like this. Yeah, it's absolutely. As, as, a, as a commentator, you... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Accuracy on the brace. Five with Mahdi. Oh, he has five with Mahdi. So one, one less hull than we expected. So five left on the victory. Is there a leading shots yes, on there the? Is. I think I think it's wise to to re-roll those two. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Is th it wise to re-roll all the red dice? No, Ooh, the answer is no. no. But it would be awesome if you did. I I think I kind of would want to fish for a crit though. So I, I maybe I would grab a blue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, re-rolling two red with uh, leading shots. No. One more damage. Nothing. Uh, it's still six. So, no, no change. Yeah, I, I think you should have re-rolled a bit more to fish for the crit. Does the uh, the side arc looks like it has a shot to the front? Probably not to the side to side. So. Yep. There, yeah, just so table, confirming at the table. So uh, three more damage. Obstructed, yep. is it medium range? Medium range. Montana looks like he's opting to remove a blue rather than a red. What? I don't know how I, I feel about know. that. There we go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Still not enough, but worth it. Is it It's since it's right. There's three, yeah. about three shields in the front as yep. well. So I don't think he's in the spot to ram yeah. as well. All right, he's he's pushing he's pushing his luck. Uh, he's pushing tossing the one damage to reroll the red. Oh, he gets and it's a crit. Oh. That's exactly what he needed. But it doesn't. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. He's got shields in the front. Oh, okay. Womp womp. <laughs> ah. I'm ah. So, uh, given how the ISD is turning at speed two, they'll probably just plow through all those squadrons and then get real sad. Come on, Ram. If only that station it's wasn't there. Ram. The Gazanti might have been a hero. Oh, that Gazanti is going to be a hero regardless. Uh, we're making another caster prediction right now. I'm that, not. I'm not. That Gazanti is going to get the kill shot on that trash Modi. Modi, worst commander in Armada. <laughs> Is going to be killed by Gazanti <laughs> with a double arc shot. I'm being called out for bias by the producers. Um, I don't see how that is the case. Threading the needle through the squadrons. Uh, who's going to get run over? Who's not? Oh, he, Montana thinks he's going to ram. <laughs> and dropping the maneuver tool on all your washers. <laughs> oh. He does get the ram. He, he, he does get the ram. Because he, he's moving to speed three. He had a NAF token hidden somewhere. Interesting. So I can see why he gambled a little more. Yep. But he still will move. But how, how is he putting in a tick at that speed? All right. So we may have a bit of a clarification. 
We're doing a backup. Uh, backup. You have to back up with the speed two. You have to back up with the speed two. So that was, yeah. Plug it in, back it up, then redo on that. Is that a RAM? Uh, that is not a RAM. That, no. In traditional uh, VTDV fashion, uh, we have the a uh, rules misinterpretation on stream, <laughs> clear to all except the players, um, and we are just resolving ourselves through that. So Christian's taking his card back. There was there is no RAM. Uh, they're going to have to figure out where the squadrons were. In in real life, in meat space, Armada is a tabletop miniatures game. And it's subject to tolerances, to bumps, to all sorts of little errors and changes in Earth's gravitational field that results in states that are not perfect. If, if you want a perfect game, play on TTS, play on Vassal. But little minute errors and rules misinterpretations will always happen. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of rules interactions at play at any given time, so it is not a fault of the players for misinterpreting the rules. Victor is probably going to lumber in towards the, uh, the station. The station. And, and as I am calling it, this magnificent front arc with its infinite damage and this, I, th I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna take out that victory with the Gazanti. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can only hope. Um, Arctans. I'm curious if uh, Demo will be able to loop around enough in time, if uh, VS or the ISD just stays at speed three and flies away. It may be a dance of death and. Based on the squadron shakeup, I think Montana's got the slight advantage. He's got the carrier power. Does he um, though? If the uh, if the ISD stays at three, it'll be out of range. It I, will, I'm might. I'm declaring that that uh, VSD is going to overshoot the station. Um, <laughs> I have no idea how this Gazanti is going to do it, but I've placed my chips down on yeah. <laughs> on that improv. The outcome. only thing that is being overshot here is your expectations of a VSD. Have you have you used a VSD? I, I've I've used numerous VSDs. I was um, before the the two ship nonsense. I had a VSD with the demo and a support Gazanti. Two support Gazantis. I see. I think it's a really solid ship, uh, even in the SSD era. Yeah, but ha have other than a straight line, have you ever placed a VSD where you wanted it to be? Absolutely. I don't believe you for a second. That's because all I do is queue up uh, navigates. <laughs> and, and with Jared Gerard? Or just and with Jared Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, sometimes I miss. <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait for that fleet command. Oh, this fleet command is going to be amazing. We're speaking of the Rebellion of the Rim. Take evasive action with when you spend a nav token or the card, you get an extra yaw click. It's going to be amazing. You heard it here first. I, I think uh, two VSDs where you have a Warlord and Harrow backed up with something else, two Gazantes or another ship, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a really solid list uh, for a good time to come. And, and it's a classic almost Wave 3 list yep. with maybe a sprinkle or two on top. Yeah. All right. Nice. Valen shooting that stuff. Three damage on something. Scatter. <laughs> Valen into Mauler there. <clears throat> Scatter spent on Mauler. Oh, flat coming from the Gazanti. How? Oh, Jendon. Okay. I forgot that Jendon was still alive for that. So. And what is this? Is that a Jonas shot? That looks like a Jonas shot. Yeah, that is a shot on uh, Jonas with a single black flak die. No, no, no. It is Jonas shooting at somebody. Oh. No, it's the Gazanti flak. Yeah, it's oh, the Gazanti flak. Well, oh, he said it's Jonas shot. I, I was very confused because Jonas is dead. Ignore me. Gazanti getting into uh, 
danger territory with uh, that Jonas in place next to uh, the Warlord. So the, the combo of Jonas, Quad Turbo, and uh, Warlord means that there's always going to be that accuracy for the Scatter and then a double hit. So it, it really puts a lot of pressure on the Evade token and it will go down. And that's not a Modi Gazanti for Montana, so it only has three hull. There is a blinded gunner's critical on the VSD and a damaged munitions. So it's going to lose a die and cannot spend accuracies. I was oh. on top of the capacitor failure. That is something that we are not aware of at the, at the caster table. So the blinded gunner... Well, now we are. <laughs> the blinded gunner changes everything. Scratch that. Gazanti's fine. No one worry. No one panic. So Jonas will be able to still change it to an accuracy to get Warlord value, but he can't spend it. Navigate on the engine techless demolisher. Oh, no. Is he? Oh, he's fine. I was going to say he's, he's fine, fine to but he's going three. He's fine, but where's he going? Uh... And that's why you put engine tech on demo. <laughs> There's going to be a squadron, uh, anti squadron fire from that demo. It's a whiff. Yep, so we are moving to squadron phase. Squadron. Christian still has Morna and Mahler. Morna's not going to shoot. Interesting. Why, oh, why Mahler's, is Mahler's, uh, Morna on the Christian ah. side is pinned by Sienna. Good point. No There's point. no intel, uh, so you can't really do anything. And since it's just Sienna and no one else can engage Sienna, there's no way to burn through that... Uh, it's scatter, scatter. and there's no point in taking the damage. Nicely done by Montana. Three damage. And um, then scatter spent. So Mauler shooting at Valen, I, or not Valen, at Mauler on Mauler battle, it, I guess? Mauler on Mauler battle. Sienna shooting at uh, Morna. <laughs> Counter one from Morna does nothing. Feels sad, man. Feels bad, man. No swarm. Oh, what's what swarm? No swarm. No swarm reroll. Take one damage. Put that down. All right. Good positioning by Montana. Intentional? Absolutely. 100%. Okay, setting up buckets. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Do do I see an opportunity? No. An opportunity coming in right here. I think there can be a side shot, unobstructed, to the side of that VSD, or even the rear. And I'm, I called it right here. It's going to be a concentrate fire. There's going to be two damage. It's going to be braced down to one. Crit's going to turn up. Structural damage. He, he's got to shoot the side arc. And then I'm going to win the lottery. Squadrons, VSD squadrons, uh, as a command... No, I think he's just trying to finesse his squadrons into the right spot. He probably looks like he can get Jonas and Merrick. That that seems to be it. The bombing commences soon. Oh, he's Merrick? shooting Merrick. Merrick being shot. Got him. One damage. Merrick into Merrick, Merrick. into Merrick. Gathering the dice. Merrick, the man who can't miss his black dice unless he rolls two blanks. Four damage. Brace the two. I believe that is Christian's Mauler there. Up there. I guess he has Sienna, right. Yep. And Mahler Mythyl goes down. Side to front. Christian is weighing whether he wants to flak. No, he has changed his mind. Side to front on the ISD. All Jonas right. has showed up. Hope oh, did he remember the blinded gunners? <laughs> or, what? Or, sorry, did he did he remember at, the at this at this point he should change one of those double hits to an accuracy to get another accuracy to change it to a warlord double hit. Uh, Montana is swearing like a sailor. I think he forgot his uh, damage munitions, but... Uh, rear to front. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Christian uh, acknowledges <laughs> it's a more realistic role. QBT does its thing. And then from nothing, he has made something thanks to Jonas. His name is Jonas. He is carrying the wind, or the wind in this case. Moving at speed two, he's probably going to uh, hop on the station and hopefully drop that capacitor failure. Uh, is it too little too late? I believe he, he, he is. He is speed two, isn't he? Yes. And he has no nav. That shouldn't be an issue. He's going to be right on the station, is he not? The he station. is. Who do you overlap? One of the Merricks. He's healing. Yep, he has healed the capacitor, capacitor failure. failure. Correct move. All right, well, I guess uh, based on this uh, development of the board, my prediction for the Gazanti getting the killing shot on the VSD is on, it, on hold until further notice, maybe game four. It's fine. You're fine. It, it could happen. So the casting table is now four for 51 in our predictions today. They are right now haggling over the positioning of squadrons. Mm -hmm. um, in a squadron kerfuffle such as this is, it's very important to communicate with your opponent and establish what is in range and what is not in range. Yes. Uh, because with all the bumping of the of physical space, of, of meat space, things are going to move, and if you don't build that consensus, you're going to run into issues where two people may have different interpretations of the board state. Absolutely. So it's better to clarify it up front and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Gazanti is activated with a squadron. It looks like he is going to spend it. He picked up uh, one of them. Uh, that, I can't remember who that is. Is that the jump master? I think that's the jump master. Is that the jump master? Yes, it is. So he's looking for an angle, and I'd start farming that uh, victory. It looks like he's got that a shot on the side, unobstructed. One damage. Oh, Th he's redirect redirecting to the rear. That one shield in the back, thanks to removing that capacitor failure. By healing uh, the victory, Christian may have actually enabled more points to be farmed out of that victory. <laughs> so it's a, it's a classic Recon trick. <laughs> Two, Two crits. crits. Crit is? Life support fail. Uh, no that... command tokens to discard. No command tokens to keep. One, One HP. Uh, there's a declaration for flak. Flak number one, Merrick. that's a hit. Flak number two. Seems a lot of scatters, probably, unless they miss. There's, there's no, it's mostly the, the meaty ones, the ones with the braces uh, that have gone into the thick of things. Mm -hmm. Montana feeling the pressure. Now, being on stream, uh, this is Montana's first time, so he's, he's certainly feeling the, the pressure of it. And when you're, when you're on the spotlight, you do make more... Uh, more errors. Yes. Yeah. I tell me about it. <laughs> Familiar, oh, I, Jordan. Familiar. Yes. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I forget about Vector, and then all my squadrons are dead. Hmm. What is that? Is that Christian Sienna? That's Christian Sienna right here. Please don't overlap that. Oh, uh, you overlapped it. Is that a problem though? I think he's far enough. Potentially. Up. It's definitely. F uh, no, there's no way you're reaching that. <laughs> that. Uh. I like, we like to build the hype, but no. Yeah. It, have, it would have to be a way far away from that jump master. So within this area here or that range. Concentrate fire revealed on the Architons. Aiming for... Aiming at the Gazanti. Yeah. Looks like it may be obstructed. Three dice being rolled, so not obstructed. Yeah, adding the red die. One accuracy, three crits. 
Oh, TRC. Uh oh. That's a very nice. Possibly dead Gizanti. Evade save him. Evade saves him. Maybe. Maybe. Evade into on that double. If it's a blank, it's fine. If it's a single, then the crit can't be a structural damage. Correct. Oh, oh and there's a mind. Jonas. Never mind. All right. So, three damage. Is how, it a structural damage? How quick? Caster table says yes. Caster table does not say yes. Caster table says yes. Uh, but producer, we've been wrong before. What does producer say? I think they called the crit, but they have not informed the uh, caster table. Well, it's which, still it's still alive, so it definitely wasn't structural. Jordan, oof. correct predictions again. Ah, what a day. I should not be a psychic. Damage. <laughs> Damage munitions. munitions. <laughs> I, so not only was it not structural, it will not be killing the VSD. Normus. So, <laughs> going downhill fast with these predictions, man. <laughs> My prediction of the Gazanti killing the VSD literally cannot happen anymore. Even if there are two turns of repairing on the Gazanti. It is now our GR-75 that's worth more points and less maneuverable. <laughs> oh, one All right. Not a Side okay. to rear. That'll Kaboom. do it. Modi, best or worst Imperial commander going down. Uh, Checking arc. Even though the front is an arc of the, the VSD, uh, Flak is the, the better call. Leading shots. Still nothing. Merrick, two. Braced one damage. Yep. Merrick, a looking a little hurt. Uh, it's hard to tell, but uh, he's pinned down, so he can't really jump to that station. So, you know, uh, he's got some other buddies. Uh, Mahler and Sienna are still alive. Interesting maneuver. Oh, he revealed a navigate bucket on the uh, ISD. Yeah. A bit of uh, clarification on the housekeeping. It is a navigate on the ISD. He's slowing down to speed two. Two ticks on the firsts. And then uh, one on the fastest. So he's turning in hard. Out for blood for the uh, demolisher. Uh, in my opinion, he's protecting the injured side because his port side, the far side, has uh, taken shield damage okay. from the uh, nice rolls out of the victory. So, is he is he looking just? But he's all the squadrons are pinned down. So if uh, why why not just if, drive straight three away if he's not trying to kill something? I'm not sure. But, so I guess he's trying to go for blood. Potentially, it's to command a squadron next round. That is I, also I, Gen I cannot yep. uh, speak for his decisions. Yep. Jendon. Eh, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we'll see. Maybe, maybe we're going to see some of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, squadron battle going on. Uh, Jumpmaster taking some damage. Also, a uh, shout out to VTTV X Wing Stream. Uh, Travis manning the fort uh, all by himself. Valen and Shane. top table is uh, a match of 16 ships. Which, whichever table's on stream is 16 ships in total in an X Wing game. A shot from the uh, Gladiator. Absorbed by the ISD. Oh, I guess he was in close range. He hmm. was in close range. Hmm. Obstructed. Speed three getaway. Uh, he's not exactly in. One thing that we can see from this angle is that he wasn't exactly in with his maneuver template, but that's a minor. Um, now there's going to be a double shot. Oh, no. It's oh, what? That's Look a... at these broken dice. What? Yep, Jonas is a cool, 
Jonas is a cool dude, confirmed. <laughs> Deletes that poor uh, Gazanti. I had I had high hopes for him. Yeah. I I always root for the underdog. At uh, Gazanti, I thought he would live the dream, take out the VSD. Nope, he just gets cheesed by Jonas and those broken gold world's dice. Ah, uh, what a day. Some uh, <laughs> yikes! Some squadron non-action happening. Uh, a total whiff from one of Christian's ships. Sienna firing at Morna. Sienna versus Morna, match of the century. A bit one-sided, if you ask me. No swarm, so one more damage. Plinking away. I, she's got to be at like six or five health at, at this point. At this rate, Morna may go down by turn eight. Wait a uh, second. <laughs> another another uh, whiff by yep. uh, Valen. Merrick on Merrick. Merrick on Merrick. Nice. Merrick nice. uses his Merrick ability. Uh, so Merrick's ability will turn that blank into a, a hit crit. So very nice on squadrons as well. Mm -hmm. I believe they're going into turn five right now. Uh, Demo likely is going to join in on the... Flak game mm -hmm. uh, with a bit of squadron sprays. Dem Demo reveals a navigate command. Yep, there, there we, we go. go. Cleaned up. Demo reveals a navigate. There's going to be a bit of flak before it moves on its merry way. Uh, the main things that are going to happen is a um, settling of the squadron uh, fisticuffs. Mm -hmm. So five remaining on uh, Montana's side, four remaining on Christian's side. Montana certainly has a bit better position with his squadrons and support of his capital ships. Yeah. But uh, if if Montana can uh, pull a few of those squadrons out of the, the scrum and uh, engage the Architons, maybe there may be a few more uh, objective tokens. Yeah, with the strategic visor on the ISD, he, uh, Christian will have to make both the ships first, so he'll be able to position the ISD to potentially get a long-range shot off and then position a way for the Architons to not be able to escape. And the Architons is down some shields, so if there's no nav, or sorry, no engineer, or no nav, well, there's probably nav coming, but if there's no engineering, that Architons could go down in one shot. I mean, that would involve landing in an arc, uh, in a medium range arc for the next turn, which can happen, so I would hope if that, for that case to be, you would have to have probably a nav coming up on the ISD and then a concentrate fire for the last turn. With the strategic advisor, you'll have a little more options to play with. If, if you remember strategic advisor in this uh, moment of time, I think that's a high value play. Montana it's commenting on the quality of the <laughs> Home Depot washers. I bought some myself, they're great. Oh, I know we're going back on this. Oh, they're so nice. I, I think the the silicon inserts from one of the Justins mm -hmm. from Texas. Much better. Much better. But I I don't have you don't have a silicone three D printer or whatever he uses. It's it's just the the mix. You just pour that mix and Ah, it takes time. And that requires wanna... crafting skills. Oh, Which yeah. one of us has those? I hit rocks with a hammer for work. I'm an engineer. I don't know how to do things practically. Uh, AutoCAD it? You could probably, you could definitely over-engineer I'm it. a theoretical engineer. I don't <laughs> even know AutoCAD. Are you a theoretical engineer or theoretically an engineer? Um, the latter. <laughs> uh, so, demo getting some flack. Uh, jump master on last legs. Everybody gets a damage. No. Now we're measuring for some flack out of that uh, ISD. Oh, he did a squadron. No, nope, he's doing squadrons. He's doing squadrons first. He's checking range. He has the jump master and he has Merrick. Uh, if they time out, um, as long as someone has revealed a ship dial, um, the round proceeds. So if it's turn six and someone flips over no, it, once it enters the planning phase, what is the uh, ruling on when you go overtime? Is it when someone puts down a dial in the planning phase or someone reveals a 
dial in the ship face. We'll have to consult the judge. We're going to go with if a dial has been revealed, and we will get back to you on that it's one. It's like X Wing, then. It would be uh, during the ship phase. If you're okay. in the ship phase, then it's so. fine. But so, if you're in the planning phase or the command phase. If, if they're midway through yeah. round uh, turn six, they play out the turn. Um, but if if it's in the planning Merrick stage, we're damage, not making a too, definitive ruling call. To getting that sweet vengeance on Jonas, who's provided so much value. Jumpmaster on Jonas. Two dice. Two dice with Swarm. Admiral. Nicely done. Nice. By that little Jumpmaster. Uh, that jump master now has the option to move. Jump master pulling back. I know Christian's a good player, but he might have baited like uh, keeping the jump master around and not shooting at Jonas if Jonas yep. had a chance of dying. But so out of range of uh, Christian's Mahler, Sienna, and Sienna, and Mahler is still free. Yeah, Mahler's. Free. Mahler is tied up with Valen Rudor up there, so he's not moving, going anywhere. Speed two. He did forget the strategic advisor. Yeah. So. Or maybe decided not to. Maybe decided not to. You know, it, it's it's optional, but. Oh, that would. I I believe he to also make it a uh, a possibility for really killing that Architons. He'd have to have nav to get a sharper turn in to point his front arc. And the Architons will move before the, the ISD. So, Navigate Command revealed yeah. by the Architons. Goodbye. Bye-bye. He is gone. I wanted to believe, but... Eh. Squadron Face. Remnants. Mahler. On Valen. Three Here dice. Come. Two damage. Two damage. Brace to one. Montana had an option of either pushing that jump master out to engage Sienna or to move inside, obstruct himself outside of range one to, to protect the, the ship. Mm -hmm. So Montana opted to protect the ship. Also, the option would have been uh, throwing Merrick there if he's still healthy at Sienna to lock her down to. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure how healthy uh, Merrick is. What, when during the uh, ship phase, he activated shot and then left Merrick in the same mm -hmm. spot. Yep. Sienna shooting uh, Jendon. One. One damage. Three more squads from... Oh, there's a good roll. Two. Oh, accuracy three hits. Yep, three hits. Three hits on Morna. Yeah, uh, yeah, targeting that's nice. the the brace. That's a great roll. Morna is now getting low on on hull. Valen. That yeah, Morna's still not. Morna toggling. To Valen toggling. Jendon is going to be the um, last squad in question. Yep. Nice roll. <laughs> Scatter. Good good roll on Valen. Doesn't matter. Flight commander Valen or co yep. flight controller Valen. Needs. Morna gets toggled. Can't do anything versus Sienna. Now Jendon. So going for Jendon points. is going to shoot the well, Architons. Uh, Jendon is going to trigger Merrick, Merrick to, shoot. to shoot the Architons. Going for those points. And it's, it's a but crit. Redirect. Good job, Redirect. Good choice. Good choice. Don't take that damage. Don't give up those points. Dial revealed. Vengeful shooting. Yikes. TRC. Oh, yeah. All tokens available on the ISD, mm -hmm. taking some more shield damage. That is a concentrate. That is a squadron command. Interesting why I dialed that in, but no, but that. How'd he maneuver that thing? So it looks like it was a nav. So it was a nav. 
Ah, uh, so we got it. The mixed poor, up. poor housekeeping uh, confused the casters. Ah, also in slight insanity. This, is, this but... is like watching a movie with a unreliable narrator, isn't it? <laughs> Why would you call yourself an unreliable narrator? Well, it's like it's Memento, because, where I, I only you're... remember the game state in six second intervals, <laughs> and then I have to. I have all these pictures that but I have drawn on my it, notepad. It backwards from turn six. Oh, that's true. I mean, I could edit it later. <laughs> <laughs> so <Nope>. there's <laughs> BTTV will edit this, uh, <laughs> style. Yeah, this right. uh, game memento style and uh, send it over to me so I can <laughs> reconstruct what happened. It's all edited in post anyway. But then you'd, you'd have to tattoo all the commentary of the too. That's right. I'd, I'd have tattoos of the commentary. <laughs> oh, man. So, looks like some squadrons. Uh, Valen, or Mahler missing Valen. Sienna, it looks like she's probably flying away. So, this is demo with a squadron. Lock it down. There. Flying in, shooting Merrick. Landing on the station. Good, good choice. Good choice. Great choice. Nice. Three damage. Brace. Take two damage. Yep. Down to two health. Ooh, does Merrick go for the double tap to try and kill Sienna? ISD hasn't gone yet, has it? No, it has. Yeah, the ISD went. But uh, in the squadron phase, I was thinking. Tough call. One damage to Jendon. He probably shoots once just to see. If he still has his braces, he's fine. One damage. Is Valen double arced? I don't think he was an arc. Uh, Christian is going speed three. He's trying to decide where to go. Straight line. Get it. Just land on the rock for style. Yep. Squadron Final phase. Squadrons. Final squadron phase of the game. Oh. Sienna's heavy, so Merrick's shooting the rear. Hit crit. So he's just trying to get some points he's here. Gonna, he's looking for points. Redirect being used. One on the rear. Jendon burns all the shields. Ah, uh, darn. No more uh, fighter ambush tokens. And that's, that's probably going to be it. There's going to be Sienna on Morna. So the only thing that can happen is Sienna killing Morna potentially. Nope. Nope. Not good enough. That is it, most likely. That is it. That's it. That's all. Very Montana good. Montana takes the game. Two thirty-three to one forty-four. That's the end of round.